Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. Yeah, let's get into it. Remember, you can find me on Instagram at the Jesus Show NTO. Facebook, type in the Jesus Show, not that one. TikTok at the Jesus Show, not that one. YouTube, type in the Jesus Show, not that one. And email me your questions, comments, and concerns. The Jesus Show, not that or I'm so sorry, email the Jesus show NTO at gmail.com. I don't know how I messed that one up because I'm literally looking at my show notes. I am currently in Honolulu. How's it bra? I was going to record an episode outside on the beach. I had a dope ass location. I keep going like this because right in front of me, there's a window. And if you saw my show Instagram story started raining and there's a palm tree out there and it's going super windy right now. Yeah, so that sucked. I woke up at like 6am. It's 11.51 11.51 right now in the afternoon. I woke up at 6 a.m. because I thought, okay, I'm going to try to go. So I went to this new uh, little, uh, is it a restaurant? It's called Barefoot Grill. It's on the beach. It's really cool. If you saw my personal Instagram account yesterday, And today, because it should still be up, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's a little, it's like a, no, it's, I mean, it's not a restaurant, but it's an outdoor place. You can bring your own beer, not beer, but like you can bring your own drinks, alcoholic or not. Uh, They do sell like sodas and water there. I think they even sell uh, like smoothies. I can't remember. But you go, they got some food, and it's a nice outdoor seating area, and the ocean is right there. And they have live music, apparently Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We were there yesterday, which was Sunday, today's Monday. And uh, it was it was nice. On the way there, I was scouting some locations, and I went, oh, this is good. And I tried a couple, a couple spots. And I, I framed it up and I was like, oh, this is going to look good for tomorrow. And then the rain had other plans for me. So I'm recording in my beautiful room, as you can tell. On this side, this window is facing another building. So it's just a white wall from the building. And then in front of me, I have the palm tree and then I can see some of the buildings And then there used to be this market right here, but they tore it down. I don't know what they're going to do with it. It was really cool before. I hope it's cool, but I feel like a lot of the stuff here in Waikiki, like the little things that made it feel like, oh, local Hawaii. Not everything, but I feel like some of the things are, are much different now. Like there's an international market over here and excuse me it used to be different but now it's like a very fancy mall I don't know it's I don't I don't necessarily like it it's too commercialized but at the same time it's one of those things where like we live in a day and age where I guess we're trying to make everything better, trying to, I don't know if it's making everything better. I feel like just like companies and corporations are trying to just buy, like buy up everything, all the land and then put their shit on it. I don't know. I've talked to a couple locals and when I say a couple, maybe like seven of them ever since the international market opened up. I don't even think they call it the international market. But ever since the mall, 
excuse me, opened up each one of them and said, like, it's stupid. Like, it's just, it, it kind of, like, dumbs down the area. And then when they tore down this thing, um, they didn't like it either. But, I mean, that's that's only seven people. I, that's That's not even... I think a good number to even like say like oh I pulled a bunch of people because I didn't um, but every time I come here I love this place so much like I'm rarely I'm rarely in my room when I come like yesterday yesterday we got here I hit the gym for about an hour came back showered really quick and then I went out just started walking around and then I met up with some of my crew over at Bear Barefoot Grill we were over there for like four hours we caught the caught the sunset and then one of the girls she had to wake up like super early today I think she had to wake up at like 5 a.m so we walked back and on the way back uh you know, the, the, the ladies, they came to the hotel and I just kept walking. I think I walked for maybe an like hour, hour and a half. Just walking around, not looking for anything in particular. And I finally came back to the room and I think it was like 10. I fell asleep, let's say 1030. And then I woke up at six. And then I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. As far as recording. But what I did first is. If you guys. So I put out an episode today. A Jesusito. But it was because of what happened with uh, the whole uh, SD card fuck up that I did. So I put out an episode today and then this will come out on Wednesday. But I was trying to. Like I wanted to put that out, so I put it out. I edited it, all that, all that stuff. And then I was trying to like call an audible. I was like, let's see where I can. I could have recorded downstairs, but it was a little loud. Like I could have done it early in the morning, but I didn't. But I hit the gym. The gym here is a lot nicer now. Has more equipment. It used to like really suck and now it's like it went from a two to like I would say a seven that's a big jump and really all they did was they added an additional weight rack of free weights so it goes you know five pounds to 50 pounds so now they have two sets of them and they added one of those like workout towers towers uh, and then they reposition some stuff. and I mean, it's I like it a lot better. So I spent time in there. I was done. Walked around a little bit. Got some food. And then started raining again. So I came inside. And then I had my backpack ready to go. And I was like, all right, here I go. And then it started pouring again. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to record it in the room so that's where i'm at um yeah so i was watching re-watching harry potter i don't know if you guys watch harry potter or not but i lowly harry potters is very very nice um normally what we do is when me and Allie leave the house we will turn our camera on in the living room just so we can watch the boys in case of anything and we put something on, like we leave the TV on, but if we leave Netflix on, and if it's a show, which we all know, it says, are you still watching after X amount of episodes? So we've done that, you know, thinking like, oh, we're going to be back quick, and then we don't, and we come back, and then there's nothing playing, so it just kind of sucks. But on Peacock... If we let it play, it'll just keep playing other shows or movies. And what we realize is with Harry Potter, if we're going to be long for an extended amount of time, 
it'll play the movie and then it plays like the next one. So like it just keeps going until you come back. So that's kind of cool. So what we normally do is we turn the camera on in the living room and we put Harry Potter on for the boys. Um, so we've, we've watched a lot of it. And the other day we were watching the Deathly... Well, we came back from wherever we were at. And the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was on. And I noticed something. So in the movie, towards the end, when, they're, when the bad people are attacking Hogwarts, they start fucking up the Quidditch pitch. And I thought... That's a dick move. They can attack Hogwarts because clearly they, they want to kill everybody. They want to they want to kill Harry Potter, they want to kill everybody that's helping them. And Voldemort is like, you know, fuck fuck everybody, fuck that guy. We're killing everybody. But from my understanding, you have Hogwarts here and the Quidditch pitches are did I say that right? The Quidditch pitches. Yeah. The Quidditch fields. The Quidditch field. Because I don't think there's multiple. I think there's just one. Yeah. Let's call it the Quidditch pitch. Is not like right next to the school. So let's say. I'm trying to find something. Here we go. Let's say this is Hogwarts. It's over here. And then like way over here. Maybe like a 10 minute walk. 15 minute walk. Let's say 10 minute walk from the school Hogwarts. You walk. And the Quidditch pitch is over here. What I'm trying to say is they're not right next to each other. So on the way to Hogwarts, the school, the building, the castle, you don't have to fuck up the Quidditch pitch. But these assholes messed it up they start messing up the towers and i thought what a bunch of assholes like leave leave that alone yeah go kill the people you want to try to go kill but why are you messing up the quidditch pitch like there's no there's no reason for it and i never realized that until i was watching it recently and i was like like these people are assholes already because they want to kill harry potter but this just makes them even worse because they're doing something that they don't need to do. Messing up the Quidditch pitch doesn't help kill Harry Potter. It doesn't like, I mean, it might piss them off. I don't even think it would piss you off because if, if, they're, if they're magical wizards and... Which is, they can just like expel the armors. And then, you know, the whole thing gets fixed. So it just, it seems unnecessary. It was, it was, it, it's odd to me. I was like, what a bunch of assholes. <laughs> That's why. I just, I thought about that and I was like, That's so fucking stupid. Um, oh yeah, I want to talk about this. Why do people ask other people? Or single or married, why they don't have kids. I've experienced this a lot. Before uh, we had the baby. A bunch of people would always ask me, like, oh, why don't you have kids? Are you ever going to have kids? Why don't you have kids? You should have kids. And when people first started telling me, I, I, I always thought it was odd. And I'm talking about strangers. When strangers tell you shit like that, I'm like, what the, what the fuck do you, like, what the fuck do you care? The fuck does it matter to you? I never really said anything until, I don't know, maybe like two years before we had the baby. Maybe even three years before we had the baby. People go, why don't you have kids? And I go, because it's, I don't want any kids. I wouldn't even tell them that. I wouldn't even tell them that I wanted kids. They would ask me, like my coworkers, coworkers would ask me, why don't you have kids? And I would say, what does it matter to you? 
remember the first time I tried that out. I was a little nervous to to tell somebody that. Because it's it's a question they ask. And then it seems like I'm coming off kind of like a dick. And like, yeah, my heart was pounding a little bit. I got like, I got a little hot. Like I felt like an internal heat. I was like, what does it matter to you? And I remember the lady going, it's just a question. And I go, yeah, and I'm not understanding why you would ask me that question. That's weird. Why do you, why do you want to know? She's like, well, it's just a question. I go, yeah, but like, it's a rude question to ask. I said, I think it's a rude question to ask. And she proceeds to tell me, why is that rude? How can that be rude? And I said, well, you don't, you don't know. You don't know me personally. You don't know my life. You don't know if me and, you know, my girlfriend, my wife, whoever I'm with, you don't know if we've been trying to have a kid and it has, and we haven't been able to. You don't know if, you know, the person I'm with has been pregnant and then they've lost the baby multiple times. You don't know if we had a baby and then we lost the baby and then we've decided not to try again. Like There's a lot of things that could happen. And for... Like if, what I'm trying to say is like, if somebody would just were to ask you like, oh, do you have any kids? That's different as to if somebody's prying, they're like, you don't have kids? No. Well, why don't you have kids? You should have kids. Having kids is the greatest thing. That's when I think like, who the, who the fuck do you, like, who the fuck are you to ask me that shit? So I remember saying that to the, you know, the first time I I told somebody and she didn't like it. She's like, well, I was just trying to ask a question. I said, well, maybe you should learn how to ask questions that aren't rude. And she kept trying to throw it back on me like I was being rude. I'm like, I'm not being rude. You're asking me a very personal question that I shouldn't have to answer, that you shouldn't even ask. That's weird that you want to like pressure me into having kids when it's not even between you and I, it's, it's odd. It's odd to me. And then I've experienced other, other women like giving women a hard time for not having kids. It's weird. Weird to the point where like I've stepped in before and I go, why, why are you asking her that shit? Like, you don't know, you don't know her situation. And I say the same thing, you know, you don't know if she's tried and she can't, you don't know if, you know, you know, something terrible has happened. Like, you know, she had a baby and then they, you know, she lost it. Like, you don't know any of this shit. Like, don't ask fucking stupid questions like that. And same thing, every single time the person asking the question seems to get offended and like, oh my God, I'm the victim. And it's like, you're not the victim. You're the fucking asshole for asking. You're the fucking asshole for trying to push something on somebody. Just because you did it doesn't mean that other people should do it. I've had some people ask me, you know, oh, now that you have a a baby, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it's changed your view, which it definitely has, you know, before I said I, I never wanted kids and now I can't imagine my life without our son. Um, but I don't like when I talk to other people when, you know, they go, Oh, like, I don't know if I want kids. And it's weird. Like not weird. I'm not weird is very dismissive. I try not to go, Oh, well you should have kids because having kids is the greatest thing. I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that because I feel like once people have kids, it's like they become an ambassador 
to try to convince others to have kids. And I'm like, that's, that's not, that's not, my, that's not my job. Like I had, we had our son because we had our son, you know, it definitely wasn't planned, but you know, like I've said before, like we, we can't, we were excited. We, we had him. We're happy. We had him. Couldn't picture our lives without him. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to start talking to everybody and go, oh, you should have kids. Fuck no. I've had some people on my, not my last flight, a couple of trips ago. Somebody's like, oh yeah, so like you, you know, you change your mind. And I go, yeah, I changed my mind. And this one girl, I think is or was dating some guy. And she's like, oh, do you think? Oh, so like guys change their minds. I said, listen, just because I changed my mind doesn't mean that all guys are going to change their mind. I go, there's there's some people that say that they're going to have kids and then or want kids and never do. I go, it's it's each situation is different. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because recently I had a flight attendant and she was just berating this girl. And she was just like, oh, you know, I have three kids and it's the best thing I've ever done. Like, and this flight attendant was like, well, I don't like, I don't really know how I feel about it. Like, I don't know if I want kids. And the lady just kept like. Oh, but you have to, and oh, you have to, and this and that, and oh, it's a miracle, blah, blah, blah. And I was working in front. The two ladies were in the back. So at one point during the flight, the flight attendant back comes to the friend and goes, you know, she's like, the one back there, you know, she's, uh, she's a little, and I said, oh, yeah, why? I said, if you don't mind, you know, if you don't mind sharing. She's like, well... She's just making me feel uncomfortable a little bit. And I said, yeah, like, what is she doing? And then she told us. And I was like, what? Like, why does she care? She's like, I don't know. She's like, I don't even know how we got on the, the subject. She goes, but she just started, like, she mentioned she had, you know, three kids. And then she's like, oh, you know, when are you going to have yours? And she was like, uh. So then we both go to the back. And I start talking to the lady. I don't. I think I said like, "Oh, how did it go back here? How did the service go, or whatever?" And then she mentioned, she's like, you know, she tells the flight and she's like, "Well, Jesse has has a son, right? Having kids is great." And I went, "Fuck, man!" I didn't hear everything. You know, I was I was told the story, but it wasn't even me being back there two minutes, and she was already like, "Oh, but she has to." I told her the same shit. I was like, hey, don't do that. Or that's rude. Or just because you have kids, just because I have kids, doesn't mean everybody needs to have kids. And I think I said something like the you know, the 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 earth is overpopulated anyways. I don't really know if it is. It feels like it is. When you go outside, you're around people, you know, you're like this and so many fucking people. I'm like, hey, this shit's over overpopulated. I don't think everybody should have kids. Uh, then she got she got really mad. The flight attendant, the older flight attendant, got mad. She was like, "Well, you know, having kids is a miracle." I said, "Yeah, okay." I said that it, it you 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 shouldn't influence or try to influence other people. And then I said, "For you to think that you can influence other people, that's a real dick move." Like what? How? How much do you think of yourself? Like I would never think. I've never thought of myself being able to influence anybody's opinion or decisions, or even change people's minds. Like I know I share with you guys, you know, my opinion on things, you know, I'm sitting here looking into a camera, hoping that you guys are watching, listening. Um, but at no point do I feel 
Like somebody's going to listen to this and go, oh, yeah, you know, I used to ask that question all the time. I should stop because I don't think I have that much influence. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I definitely don't have that much influence. And like me having this podcast talking to you guys, I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to change the world nor do i have that motivation i mean maybe maybe i think uh, i i want to change a couple things like just be just be more aware of your surroundings about other people i mean i don't know things like that you know one thing that happens i don't i'm i'm i assume i assume this happens to other parents Because it happens to me, and I don't think that when I have a thought or when something happens to me, I don't think that it is exclusive to me or if, or I have, like if I think of something, I don't ever think like, oh yeah, like nobody's ever thought of this before. And I, I think I've mentioned that before. But every time Ali leaves on a trip, every single time, I feel like my poop gets scared. And I can't. Okay, so on a on a normal day, me and Allie are home. You know, the baby's sleeping, the boys, you know, are sleeping, and I wake up. I wake up, and it's let's say you know my my alarm goes off. My alarm goes off. I wake up. Thanatos is normally sleeping on the bed with us, so he wakes up and he's like, Whoa! he's making his noise. Normally what happens is the poop starts knocking on my butthole and goes, can I, I want to get out. And oh, Okay. So I get up, I go poop. I'm on there, I get everything out. In that either the baby has already woken up and Allie's feeding him while I'm taking a shit or I'm taking a shit and the baby wakes up during. So I poop, get everything out. Then I take the boys out. We'll go for a walk anywhere from like 40, 40 minutes to an hour. Come back. I may eat a little something. Maybe 30 minutes after being home. Maybe an hour. Between 30 minutes and an hour. I poop again. Boom. Poop. And then I'm good. Let's say that's by like, let's say I wake up at 7, poop, walk the boys at like 7.45, come back 8.45, by like 9.30 I'm pooping again. Then if I'm going to go to the gym, sometimes I have to poop before, other times I poop after I get home from the gym. So that's my third poop. Then... After the gym, let's say before I take the boys out at night, I poop again. Then after the baby has gone to bed, maybe before I get into bed, between 9.30 and 11, I poop again. And then I go to bed. So I'm pooping like four or five times a day. I'm, I'm pretty regular. It's good. That's a typical day. But when Allie's gone, even if I have to poop, I won't poop. I like hold it in. I think my poop gets scared. Because what goes through my head is if I poop, let's say I wake up and I poop. And the baby wakes up. Now I'm going to have to like try to hurry up, clean up, and then go get him. I don't want my poop to get interrupted. I want to poop in peace, just get it all out. There's times where I wake up in the morning, let's say Ali's getting home at night or sometime during the evening. There's been a lot of times where I will not, I won't poop until she gets home. You know, 
I think to myself, like, why is that? There has been times that I've pooped when it's just me and the baby. Like when we lived in the other house, uh, I'd put him, I'd put him either in his little like seat, his like play seat, I guess that like rotates, or his little jumping seat. Put him right there in the doorway because I want to make sure that I can see him. And he's been, you know, jumping around, and I'm like pooping. I'm like, oh man, and I try to do it as quick as possible. But it doesn't it doesn't happen often. And there's times where my stomach has been hurting. But I, I won't because I'm like, no, I have to make sure that if he needs me, I can get to him or I can do whatever, you know, he, he needs. And I just thought to myself, that's so odd. Like why why do I do that? I would assume that as he starts getting older, my butthole will get more relaxed. I'm like, oh, I can I can poop, it's cool. But although, but also at the same time, I think, but is it? Because as they get older, you know, they start walking, they start getting into stuff. And like, that's when you really have to have eyes on them. So I don't know. I don't know if it happens to any other parents or if it's happened to other parents. Um, but yeah, I was just, I thought about that the other day when Allie came home. I was like, oh man, I haven't taken a shit all day. I was like, I do that a lot. Why is that? Poop gets, the poop is scared of memes. You know what I'm talking about, Greg? Um, oh, yeah. I think it's funny that women take pictures on the floor. Have you seen this? When I, th- and when I mean on the floor, like, I don't know how I got into this, but I went to, or you, you, know, you know how you're scrolling Instagram? Scrolling Instagram, pictures come up. And then it has, I think they're called, I think they're reels or the videos. And there was this, there was this girl taking a picture on the beach. And in the little clip, the wave comes over, you know, takes her out. So I thought, oh, that's odd. Not odd, but I was like, oh, that, that seems funny. So I clicked on it. And then I get out of it. So I keep scrolling. And then it was a picture of a woman. Like one of the suggested things comes up. And it was like a video of her on uh, like on the ground of her house. She's like, she's posing. And like she's going like this. And, you know, obviously somebody's filming her. There's music. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? So then, like, I, I go, like, I go to the next video, and it's another one. It's another one. And now this, this other girl is um, by the pool, you know, but she's, you know, on the ground. And she's like, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Then I go to the discovery page, and it's just random chicks on the floor, like, in their houses, in the middle of the street, just on a, like on a sidewalk and they're like posing and I go, what the fuck is going on? What is this? And I, I find it hilarious. The, the, the funny, the funniest part to me is there's women that are taking pictures in their house alone and then they post it. I think, what are you doing? Like imagine Imagine if th- this is this is what I think of. Imagine you go see a friend and you knock or you know they text you like oh you know when you get here just walk in the door's open. So you get there you knock. Hello, hello. You don't hear you don't hear anybody but your friend told you to open the door so you open the door you come in and then you see your friend on the ground, like posing, taking a picture. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you go, oh, no, I'm just taking pictures. Like, of you on the floor? 
Yeah. Why? Well, because this is a good angle. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? If I were to find Allie taking pictures on the floor in the house, I would go. Would start laughing so hard and just be like, What the fuck are you doing? Are you okay? Are you drunk? Is, ev- is everything okay? I don't think, <laughs> I don't think she would. I'm pretty sure Allie wouldn't take pictures on the floor. <laughs> uh, but then, but then imagine if I were to be doing that. Let's say I'm like in the kitchen and how you want to walk in. Oh my God. I think she would be concerned. She'd be like, what is going on with you? Like, oh, nothing. Or better yet, she goes to the backyard. She comes in. She's like, oh, weird. I don't, the baby's not here. Jesse's not here. The boy, where is everybody? And she hears some commotion in the backyard. She comes in and I'm on the floor. The backyard, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, just taking pictures for Instagram. I'm posting." What the fuck are you doing? I don't know. I don't know why I find that so hilarious. But then I thought to myself, maybe I should start taking pictures on the floor. Like I should, I should take a picture. That's what I'll probably do. I'll probably post the picture to my story of me in my room. <laughs> Right now in my hotel room. <laughs> oh my god. The shit people take pictures of and post on social media is the fucking wildest shit. There was a crew member. <laughs> Where were we at? Where were we? I don't remember. We were we were somewhere. I was on a layover somewhere. And this flight attendant goes. Uh, she was she was talking to the other flight attendant. We were on the van going to I think it was Miami. And she's like, oh, all of a sudden I have my earphones in and I hear, yeah, because some of these girls show their pussy on Instagram. And I went, what are you talking about? I was like, I think I would have remembered seeing. A woman's vagina on Instagram? And she's like, well, like, it's not, let let me show you. So she pulls up a picture, and it's this girl, and she's like, I don't remember what the, ca- it was like, maybe she had just worked out or something. It was, you would never think, like, if you were to read the caption, and then you look at the picture, you'd be like, wait a minute, that does not match. What you just posted. It was some like. Inspirational thing like. Oh, to be to be the, the, the person you want to be. It, it's like chiseling clay. It's never perfect. But you have to achieve. I was like what the fuck. And then you look up. And it's a close up. Of her. Bikini bottom. Bottoms. She's wearing them, and she, it looks like she like purposely put the put the bikini inside her vagina so you can like clearly see camel toe, and it was white, and she like put water on it so you can like now you can totally see her vagina. And I went, wait, what? And then she starts showing us comments. And she goes, look, and then she gets upset because guys are like, you know, oh, yeah, that pussy looks nice. And she, then the girl, <laughs> then this girl goes, the one who posted it, she's like getting upset at these guys for like, oh, nice pussy lips. And she's like, that's so gross. You shouldn't be saying that. I think, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, but. You, you just posted your pussy lips for all to see. And you ex- you don't expect people to comment on that? 
I was very confused. I was like, what is going on? Then I asked her, I said, how the, how the fuck did you find this? And she said, she posted a picture and she showed us a picture and it was her on the beach and she was on, uh, she was on a lounge chair and she has a one piece bathing suit on and it's not, it, I mean, it wasn't very revealing, but you know, she had like her, like one leg kind of bent, the other one, she was like this and she said she felt weird taking it in. She was like, I don't know. And one of her friends was like, oh, post it, post it, post it. She's like, yeah, I don't know. And she goes, I, I feel weird. And then her friend said, what you're posting isn't bad. And I didn't, I didn't think it was. Um, not that that makes it any better. Like what I think is the authority uh, on everything, which is not obviously. But I go, oh yeah, that you know, that looks like a you know, you're you're on you're on a layover, you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, why not? Post it. She did, but she said her friend goes, you know, it's a thirst trap. She's like, what? So you know, she's explaining to her, and she's like, listen, that photo that you posted isn't nearly as bad. Like you think it's bad, but it's not bad. There's worse. As to where the flight attendant goes, what do you mean there's worse? And then her friend goes, look at these pictures. And then it was one of those pictures. And one of them was that one that she showed me. She goes, but when I post, when I posted that picture of me on the layover in my bathing suit, I felt like, and I go, <laughs> I go, listen, I'm not an expert at stuff, but showing your cooch and you being on the beach enjoying a layover I go very different and then she started showing us like other pictures where it's like you know girls are showing their boobs but it's kind of like the same thing where it's like you know they're trying to be motivational I don't I, I don't understand the point of it It's, it's like, and you know, it's same goes with, you know, with guys, it's not like some of these guys, you know, I mean, they're ripped, ripped, Se I think sexy as hell, but then they're like kind of showing like a little bit of the pubes and they're like, this is like every day you wake up, you got to make it count. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't get it. And then when I was sitting in Tampa the other day, because I had like fucking three hours before my next fucking flight in Tampa, I was like, thanks. Do I have to sit in fucking Florida? I'm sitting there. People aren't embarrassed enough anymore. Like this this girl was sitting sitting there at like this big shared table where I had my chart you know I'm charging my phone I'm charging my watch and she's having a conversation and it's not having a conversation where it's just her and the other person because she was on the phone she had the fucking thing on speakerphone and she's talking to this person as if they're right there and she's talking to them as if everybody needs to hear her conversation And I thought, aren't you not embarrassed? You should be. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And somebody else was over here. And they're having a conversation. And, they're blah, 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 blah. and I thought, man, people nowadays, I don't feel like they... And when I say nowadays... It could be either there's an increase in this or it just could be that I'm noticing it more because I spend a lot of time in airports now because of my job. I've spent a lot of time in airports. Um, but like some guy, some, oh, some guy came on the plane like a couple weeks ago and I kept hearing like birds chirping. 
and I'm in the back of the plane. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I go, I hear, and it was, it was loud. I go, are there birds on here? So I see the other flight attendant, we're boarding. And I go, do you hear birds? She goes, yeah. And I go, are there birds on here? She goes, no. It's this guy over here. He's on, he's FaceTiming somebody. And I went, what? So she goes, he's right there. So she shows me and I look and whoever he's talking to on the FaceTime, there's birds in the background. So it's loud. So I go up to the guy and I said, uh, hey, if you want to continue to have that conversation, you can get off the plane and go have it over there. And he goes, are you kicking me off? And I said, no, no, I'm not kicking you off the plane. I said, I'm just, I'm suggesting that you uh, go have your conversation and try to have it in private because the people around you, I'm sure don't want to listen to your conversation. And he proceeds to tell me that he can do whatever he wants. And I go, true, you can. Well, I said, you could, you could do what you want, but when you do certain things, certain consequences come with it. Um, I said, you're having a loud conversation and the consequence of that is now I'm coming to, to you to remind you that you're in a public space and this isn't your private aircraft. Um, and what you're doing is rude. I go, that's that's the consequence of what you're doing. I said, but you, you can continue to do it. Right? Did I say you can continue to do it? I think I said something like, just because I'm telling you, oh, I think, I, okay, this, I think what I said was, just because I'm telling you that you should stop doesn't mean you have to. I said, but if you're not going to listen to what I'm telling you, then that doesn't make me feel comfortable that you're going to listen to me during the flight. And if there's certain important things I need you to do and you're not going to do it, I don't want you on the plane. I said, do you see how that works? So he goes, well, do I have to get off the phone now? I said, all I'm saying is maybe lower the volume. Maybe don't talk so loud. I said, if you have earphones, use your earphones. And then I walked away because I'm not, I don't, I've never been one to like, I don't flex my muscle or flex my authority. I just tell people things on the plane. And very, very few times have I gotten pushback from people. And I normally just walk away. And the few times that they've persisted to not pay attention, then, you know, then, you know, I've, I've, I've handled it. But I don't sit there. Like, there's been a couple of times where people go, you're just being mean to me because I, go, I don't even know who you are. I just got here to work. I don't want to be here. I don't know who you are. I don't know your name. This isn't anything personal. I go, do you know my name? No, I don't know your name. See, we don't know each other. This isn't personal. I don't know why you're taking it personal. That's that's odd to me. Um, but yeah, not enough people, not enough people are embarrassed. People should be more embarrassed. I think that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, my brother made a very good point. And I think a former football player made this point. And I can't remember who. Keyshawn Johnson, maybe he said? I don't remember. But they said Tom Brady, Tom Brady's number should be retired all across the league. Every single team should retire the number 12. And I thought to myself, I think that's a great idea. Because he's won seven Super Bowls, the most in NFL history. 
I think to honor his retirement, to honor what he's done, to recognize the achievement of winning seven Super Bowls, I think they should, you know, every single team, the NFL should just say, number 12 will never be won again. Every single team, what, I think 32 teams in the league? 20 teams? 42? I don't know how many teams there are. But every every stadium should have the number 12 somewhere in the stadium. And it should just say, thank you, Tom Brady, for what he's done. What he's done in, 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 in football. Then I believe that the only time you unretire that number. No, no, you don't unretire it. You retire that number. Just retire it. My belief is nobody's going to win either match or beat Tom Brady in the next hundred years. That's my assumption. That's what I think. Because I'm all, all all records are meant to be broken. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And congratulations to uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. Congratulations to you. Hell of a football player. Um, but he's won two. And... When all these sports, when all these football people start talking about how he can be the next Tom Brady, I'm like, mm, okay, relax. And I was telling my brother this. It's odd that in sports, in film, like with actors, actresses, with athlete, athletes, once, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take Tom Brady as an example. Um, you know, you have Tom Brady and people are like, who's going to be the next Tom Brady? Who's going to be the next Tom Brady? And I think to myself, like, why does somebody have to be the next Tom Brady? Why can't we just enjoy that? Per why can't we just enjoy Tom Brady's achievements and then see these other athletes, how they perform? Like, why is it always that it has to be the next this person, the next. I feel like we have a short attention span. That or we, we expect fucking records to be broken all our lives. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I don't understand it. Like when Landon, Dan when Landon Donovan retired, who's going to be the next Landon Donovan? Like nobody has to be the next Landon Donovan. Let Landon Donovan be Landon Donovan. Let him be the one of the greatest U.S. men's national team, one of the greatest MLS soccer players, one of the, one one of the greatest soccer players. Let him be Landon Donovan. Nobody has to replace Landon Donovan. We shouldn't be looking for a replacement for Landon Donovan. We shouldn't be replacing trying to replace Michael Jordan. We shouldn't be. Trying to replace LeBron James. We shouldn't try to replace Tom Brady. Like, I don't know. That's that's odd to me. And I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's just. It's odd. Like you have an actor. Like, oh, who's gonna be the next uh, Denzel Washington? Like nobody. Denzel's Denzel. Let let him be Denzel. Then let's just enjoy another great actor, whoever it is. I really don't know what my point about that was. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, remember to rate, like, share, and subscribe. And tell everybody you know to listen to The Jesus Show, not that one. And I will see you next week.